Three Intimate Impulse Coasters currently have the distinction as the fastest inverted coaster in the United States. This applies to Flash Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Great America, Possessed at Dorney Park, and Steel Venom at Valley Fair. While these rides feature simple layouts, they are punchy experiences that rapidly alter the forces. I enjoy these rides, but I do fear these coasters could soon be on the chopping block, and I'll explain why in this review. This review will focus on the 56 meter tall twist and spike layout, but it's impossible to talk about these rides without discussing all the impulse coasters in general. In the mid-1990s, electromagnetic launches started being added to roller coasters. Premier rides used linear induction motors, or LIMs, for their launch coasters. These were successfully used in their Flight of Fear coasters, both of which opened in 1996. Intamin was also working on launch coasters at this time using magnets. Their first ones would use linear synchronous motors, or LSMs. In 1997, they opened two reverse freefall coasters, Tower of Terror at Dreamworld and Superman at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Both rides accelerated riders to 100 miles per hour or 160 kilometers per hour. While this is the preferred launch method for many manufacturers today, including Intamin, that technology was difficult to implement in the 1990s. This led to Superman being delayed almost a year from the original opening date. So for Intamin's next launch coasters, they decide to use LIMs instead. These debuted on the Impulse Coaster. This was an inverted shuttle coaster using a multi-pass launch to propel riders up vertical spikes. The first one opened in 1998 at Tokyo Dome City. Named Linear Gale, this ride accelerated riders to 62 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers per hour. This was different from the later installations in that it featured two straight spikes. The later impulse coasters featured at least one twisting spike. The first impulse coaster made its way to America in 2000. This would be Superman Ultimate Escape at Six Flags Ohio. This ride would be faster than the prototype impulse coaster reaching speeds of 70 miles per hour, or 110 kilometers per hour. And it would also be taller, standing 185 feet, or 57 meters in height. And it would feature one twisted spike, in addition to a straight one. Three clones of Superman were added in 2001. Leo Fu Village Theme Park in Taiwan adds Screaming Condor. Then Six Flags add two more to their U.S. parks, Naming both vertical velocity, one would go to Six Flags Great America, and one would go to the then Six Flags Marine World. This is the park now known as Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. The latter was an interesting choice. The park has a strict height limit of 150 feet, or 46 meters. Their 2000 floorless coaster named Medusa was exactly this tall for that reason. Yet the park claimed vertical velocity was also 150 feet tall, but it very visibly was taller than Medusa. They tried to pull a fast one on the town, but it backfired. They were ordered to either remove it or modify the ride. They chose the latter. So before the 2002 season, they took 35 feet or 11 meters off the back vertical spike. Then the front twisted spike's height was reduced by angling it at a 45 degree angle creating an inversion over the main entrance. This also caused the ride's top speed to be reduced to 60 miles per hour, or 100 kilometers per hour. Cedar Fair began their involvement with the Impulse Coasters in 2002 as well. That was the year that Cedar Point added Wicked Twister. This would open as the tallest and fastest inverted coaster. Riders would accelerate to 72 miles per hour, or 116 kilometers per hour, and rocket up to 215 foot, or 66 meter tall twisted spikes. The following year, Valley Fair would receive Steel Venom. This was a clone of Superman. Then 2004, the chain acquired Six Flags Ohio, renaming it Geauga Lake. Superman was renamed Steel Venom, but after the 2006 season, this ride was relocated to Dorney Park, where it now runs as Possessed. At the time, this seemed like an innocent relocation, but it was the calm before the storm. 
Geauga Lake would ultimately close after the 2007 season. Speaking of closing, how are the original seven Intamin Impulse coasters faring today? Not too well. Two were scrapped entirely. Linear Gale closed in 2010, and Wicked Twister closed in 2021. Another was almost removed. When Dorney Park submitted their original plans for a new coaster in 2020, this would have caused the demolition of Possessed. But this ride was ironically saved by the COVID-19 pandemic. Dorney Park reworked their plans. Instead of adding a rumored wooden shuttle coaster, they added a B&M dive coaster in Iron Menace. They found a way to do this without losing Possessed, and that coaster still regularly operates. Two others seem to be operating sporadically, so there are questions about their long-term prospects. A handful of enthusiasts who have tried to ride Screaming Condor lately have found it closed. Those who were lucky enough to find it open discovered it waits nearly 20 minutes in between cycles to save on operating costs. Then there's the most temperamental impulse coaster of all. Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom has had the most downtime, quite possibly because of the modification. In 2019, the park rebranded the Rise Flash Vertical Velocity. While it ran fairly consistently for the following year, it has barely operated ever since the pandemic. The ride was closed from 2020 until summer of 2023. The ride ran for the next few months, but it closed in the winter and has yet to reopen. The ride is tentatively scheduled to reopen next year, but I am skeptical given all the downtime. The other two have been running consistently. Six Flags Great America also renamed theirs as Flash Vertical Velocity in 2022. Steel Venom is particularly noteworthy. This is the only impulse coasters still regularly offer the holding break. This is a unique element placed in the back straight spike of several installations. It would use LIMs to catch a train in midair, pausing them for a second. It's a mind-bending maneuver that defies gravity. While undeniably cool, it places a lot of stress on the ride's trains and structure. For this reason, Many parks have disabled the feature, even if you still see the hardware present on the spike. These rides have had other issues as well. The spikes had a lot of sway in the original impulse coasters, leading to increased wear. Wicked Twister in particular had so much sway that extra supports were needed to be retrofitted onto its tower shortly after it opened. Then they are expensive to operate. The LIMs have high power demands. There has only been one impulse coaster built since 2003. This is legendary twin dragon at Chongqing Sunak Land in China. The ride opened in 2021, and it seems to address most of the issues with the older impulse coasters. Because of the advancements in technology, it instead uses LSMs to propel the train. So it's a reasonable assumption that any future impulse coasters would also use LSMs, Intamin has not used LIMs and their other coasters in many years. Then the ride ditched the problematic holding brake in favor of two twisted spikes, both of which are more robustly supported. And as a bonus, the ride replaced the over-the-shoulder harnesses with overhead lap bars, more in line with the company's other modern thrill coasters. This improves the comfort. There is still one issue with this ride that is carried over, the low capacity. Due to their shuttle nature, these rides only have one train. Linear Gale had 12 rows. Wicked Twister and Legendary Twin Dragon had and have 16 row trains. Then the other impulse coasters have used 14 row trains. Each row seats two guests, so these rides seat between 24 and 32 riders per cycle. Combined with their high running costs, maintenance, and capacity, I think the older impulse coasters could be in trouble. In 2024, Six Flags merged with Cedar Fair, and the latter seems to have a larger say in the company's investments going forward. That is important to note for two reasons. One, Cedar Fair places a high value on cost per rider. The impulse coasters are terrible in that area. Two, Cedar Fair has had a very tumultuous relationship with Intamin over the years. They have stopped buying rides from that manufacturer and removed a handful of their rides as well. 
This includes Wicked Twister, and remember, they tried to remove Possessed a few years back. Given all this information, I have a feeling the Impulse coasters may not last more than five years. I hope I'm wrong, but that's what the signs are pointing to. With all of that out of the way, I am going to delve deeper into the 56 meter tall twist and spike layout specifically. I have not ridden Screaming Condor, so this will focus on the three in the United States, all of which I have ridden. This ride plays a major role in the entry experience at both Dorney Park and Valley Fair. At both parks, you get a full view of the coaster from the parking lot. It is impossible to miss the tall yellow spikes and the screeching LIMs. Great Americas is buried deeper within the park, and that park is a much busier skyline anyway, but I think it looks the best of the trio. When the area was rebranded as DC Universe, the coaster was also given a flash theme, but the colors were reversed from Discovery Kingdoms. Great Americas features bright yellow track and red supports, which really pop on a sunny day. I also appreciate Flash getting more coasters as of late. It was baffling to me that DC's fastest superhero did not have a coaster named after him for many years. There isn't much theming though. The queue just has some billboards about the hero. Flash is the busiest of the trio, and that's a function of the park is located at. Great America sees far higher crowds than Dorney Park or Valley Fair, so the wait can often hit the 30 to 45 minute mark. But that is usually less than the park's other major coasters, and you can almost always walk onto this during the first hour of the day. Steel Venom is usually one of the longer waits at Valley Fair, but that's usually 20 to 30 minutes. Since this ride is located near the main entrance, quite a few guests start their day with it. I find it smarter to return to this ride in the second half of the day. Possessed has always been a station wait for me. That even includes visits on weekends during both summer and haunt. If any of these rides develop a sizable queue, they are available in the park's paid skip the line options. Once in the station, you are free to select any row you'd like. I like the impulse coasters best in the front. That row really allows you to feel the speed, you get the best weightlessness, and you get the freaky visual careening towards the end of the track. Riders are restrained by over-the-shoulder harnesses. These are hard, but comfortable enough for me. However, they have a very low verify. These are among the least accommodating restraints out there. If you have any sort of gut, you will struggle to fit. This is the number one thing that seems to delay a dispatch from personal experience. Once checked, the employees usually tease riders. You then blast off from the station. This launch is sudden, with no warning. You get a decent punch because it's the only launch in the ride from a standstill. And the screech of the LIMs make it sound even faster, at least for me. You then head up maybe half the twisted spike. It doesn't do too much in the back, because you barely travel up it. But you get solid blasts of positive G's at the base, and some okay weightlessness up front. You are then propelled backwards. This is my favorite of the ride's launches. It has good power, and you really feel the yank. The train then hurdles up the back spike. Everyone gets great bursts of positive G's at the base. Then you get some weightlessness. You get a few nice seconds of it in the back row. It is weaker and briefer in front because you travel up less of the spike. But it's still notable because of how you rapidly switch from positive to negative G's and you are also staring directly at the ground versus the back of a seat. You then careen down the launch track once again. This is where I believe you hit the ride's max speed. It is an absolute rush in the front row as you feel all the wind pelting your body. Then you have the twisted spike. This is far more extreme this time around. The G's at the base are similar to the back spike this time around. Then you get similar weightlessness just reversed, meaning the front gets the superior negative G's, but this is accentuated for two reasons. One, you have the terrifying visual that you'll shoot off the edge. You come darn close to the top of the spike. I always feel uneasy at this point. Two, you have a 360 degree twist. 
if you are seated in the front, you get some solid laterals here. The train is pushed through it in the ascent and pulled through it on the descent. And since you're floating at the same time, it feels extra wild. The one con with this point is that the sudden rotation can cause you to hit your head. So I find it wise to lean forwards here to mitigate the issue. It's a light tap, but still not the most comfortable. You then fly backwards once again. I did not feel any notable speed increase. The launch is mainly there to maintain all that speed. Then you have your second climb up the back spike. When the holding brake is not active, it feels identical to the last time. When the holding brake is active though, it radically changes how it feels. The train suddenly freezes in midair. This causes you to fall forwards into your restraint. It is a thrilling and unnerving sensation. Your mind struggles to process what is happening because it defies the laws of physics. Then the train is released and you plunge downwards which offers some delightful float. You then hurtle down the launch track one last time, but this time there does not appear to be an LIM boost. It is there to start bleeding off speed, but you still have enough velocity to travel up three-fourths of the twisted spike. It offers similar forces and visuals to the prior climb, meaning it is once again fantastic in the front. You then break fairly abruptly. Once you decelerate, you slowly return to the station while you hear those LAMs whining. You then come to a stop, ending the nearly one minute long experience. This rise just 630 feet, or 190 meters of track, making it one of the shorter thrill coasters by track length. But because of the shuttle nature, you travel closer to 1,700 feet of track, which is a lot more respectable. In terms of pacing, this ride is great. It is intense start to finish with all the speed and forces. In terms of smoothness, this coaster is mostly great. Much of the ride is very smooth, which is no surprise because it is an Intamin that spends most of its time traveling in a straight path. The only problem spot is the light headbang you get on the twisted spike in the front, but I have a way to avoid that. So what would I rate the Twist and Spike Impulse Coaster? Without the holding brake, these rides get a 7 out of 10. This is a good and exciting ride. It is repetitive, but the immense speed, good positive Gs, sustained weightlessness, and scary visuals make it engaging and memorable. And it actually has a respectable duration for a launch coaster due to the multi-pass nature. If the holding brake is active, I give these rides an extra half point or a 7.5 out of 10. It gives some diversity to the experience, and it feels unlike any other element out there. Again, as of this recording, Steel Venom is the only holding brake still in use. If these rides are a priority for you, I would try to ride them sooner rather than later. If the holding brake in particular is a priority, try to get to Valley Fair ASAP. I really feel like these will be removed in the next few years with Cedar Fair now in control of them. I think the new one in China is safe, but that one is built a lot differently and much harder for most enthusiasts to experience. So those are my thoughts on the Intamin Impulse Coaster, specifically the Twist and Spike model. What are your thoughts on this ride? Do you think the removal could come soon? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there will be a lot more Roller Coaster Amusement Park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.